All right, today we are gonna be chasing basin crappies. We're gonna go over everything you need to know to put more crappies on the ice when you're chasing them out deep in the middle of the lake. So I'm finding that a lot of the fish are really disappearing once you get to about 17 feet or so. So I'm gonna dump out a little bit deeper and see if I can find some active fish. There we go. Finally stuck one. They're starting to fire up here. And we got the first crappie on the board. Solid little eater size guy right there. Not too bad. And this one crunched. The tungsten punch fly. Sweet deal. And I actually have a little skeleton minnow tipped on there right now. But yeah, it's good to see that the fish are active. I hopped a handful of holes here and they weren't really going, so this is a good sign. Got another one coming up. You can see it just slowly rising. They're not super active right now. But let's see if I can jig this puppy up. There we go. Sweet. That was a better size mark. We'll see if it's a better size fish. Not a monster, but just a real quality basin crappie right there. Sweet, they're being a little bit, as you can see on the flasher, they're being a little bit hesitant to bite. They're not firing up. One thing you'll notice about this basin bite is sometimes they'll come in fired up and just ready to drill it. There might be a few fish competing for your bait, but uh, that one was not super aggressive. But a nice eater sized fish regardless. But one thing that you will notice is when you have the competition factor, that can be a big, big key to getting bites. When it comes to presentation, right now I'm using a jig because those fish are a little bit slow and lethargic, but Oftentimes what I will do is I'll start out with a big spoon like this and the reason why I'll do that is because you can fish it a lot more quickly and efficiently. What I've got right here is just a green buckshot spoon, just a small 16th ounce one with a little spike on the treble. You can put meat as well, but the reason why I like plastics is because oftentimes you don't have to rebate quite as often. I've got a, uh, I've got a fish right down there kind of just hanging out suspended, which is usually a good sign. So I'm gonna drop down to them right now. And I'll show you just how efficient you can be with using a spoon. The problem is when they're a little bit moody like this, it can be, get, it can be a little bit tougher to get them to bite a spoon. But if they're active, it's really tough to beat a spoon with how quickly they fall. Oop, they're really competing now. Just watching the tip of the rod. There we go. Sweet. That one did crack a spoon with the plastic, so. That's a good sign. It seems like they're getting a little bit more active as the evening as the evening starts to develop here. Nice solid crappie. Spoon fell out, so not too bad there. That's just like a good solid eater sized fish. I like to, I tend to like to leave the bigger ones go, whether it's, you know, like a 13 plus inch fish, kind of that 10 to 12 inch is just a good, good eater sized fish. This is probably on the lower end of that, but yeah, I love chasing these basin crappies. There's nothing better than the visual aspect of sort of the video game, video game action right here on my electronics. So, awesome fish. There we go. 
Now speaking of electronics, I will say it's important to have them so you can actually, oftentimes it can be hard to find fish in the basin, especially if you're fishing bigger basins. And it pays to have any kind of electronics just so you can, you can see whether or not there's fish down there. And, uh, but number two, a really nice feature to have on your electronics, I don't care what brand you use, is uh, to have some kind of, let me pop this hook out here, solid crappie, is to have some kind of adjustable zoom. As you can see on my screen over here, I have the entire water column over on the right side of the screen, and on the left side of the screen, I have a zoomed in version. In particular, I have it zoomed in where there happens to be quite a few fish, which is sort of in that bottom third of the water column. But when you're dealing with a bunch of fish that are probably stacked up really close to each other and you're trying to see if there's any movement or you know if the fish aren't moving very quickly on your bait, it can pay to have a zoomed in version of it. So one thing that's really key to that zoom feature is being able to adjust it. So a lot of a lot of modern flashers will allow you to do that, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna push the up arrow so I can see the absolute top of the school. Now oftentimes, those top, that top half of the school is gonna be the most aggressive ones, at least in my experience, and they're gonna be the easiest ones to pick off on your electronics because, you know, there might be a few loners sitting up top that aren't necessarily jammed together into the pack, so it's gonna be easier to identify those fish. And what I'll do is I'll jig that top fish and eventually something will pop up like this one right here. There we go. And something might come out of the school. Maybe that top fish will come in and drill it. But regardless, I like to target the top of the school because it's easier to see my bait and uh, see what the fish is doing and see how it's reacting to the bait. So here we go. I got all wrapped up in the transducer there, but let me pop this guy out quick. There we go. Not a huge one, but we've got really good action today. Now finding basin crappies can be really easy or really difficult depending on the body of water you're fishing or if you happen to pull into the right place at the right time. And the biggest key to that is the size of the basin that you happen to target. So personally for me, when I'm going to a lake, I generally will not target the largest basin in the lake, even though there might be some really good fishing somewhere in there. I like to go to maybe the second or third biggest basin, or you know, if it's a really big lake, maybe one of the smallest basins. So oftentimes these fish are gonna be schooled up really tightly and you're gonna have to drill a bunch of holes to find out where that pod of fish is or alternatively you might have some really fancy live viewing electronics where you can just scan around until you find them out in the distance and then drill a hole there but more often than not if you have traditional electronics you're going to be drilling a lot of holes to go and find these fish so you're going to want to pick an area that's a lot smaller where you have to drill less holes to narrow them down and personally for me what i do is i will not fish a hole unless i am seeing fish Oops. There's one right there. Wasn't paying attention to my electronics. I, I won't fish a hole unless I'm marking, marking fish down below there. And when that can get tricky is when you're fishing earlier in the day, here's a real little bit of a smaller one, more of a potato chip. And when that can be difficult is when, let me save that clip. When you're, when you're fishing a little bit earlier in the day and those fish haven't started moving off the bottom yet. So what these crappies are doing in the evening in these basin bites is they're just hanging out in these areas. They might be on the bottom, they might be up on structure, but what they're doing is they're waiting for those bugs to come off the bottom and that's when they come in to feed. So oftentimes that's triggered by the sun starting to set or maybe it's starting to get a little bit darker. You'll notice on some lakes, they might not show up till it's completely dark. On other lakes, they might come out a little bit earlier, but, but regardless, I'm personally not gonna be fishing a hole or an area unless I'm marking fish. Sometimes I like to drop my bait down, down there to see if anything comes off the bottom, but more often than not, you're gonna see them stacked up in the water column and it's gonna be really easy to tell if they're there.
gonna get smoked. Got him. There you go. There you go. So one thing that's really, really key when you're chasing crappies like this is gonna be bite detection. And when you're chasing any kind of panfish, usually you're not gonna feel the bite in your hand. So you're gonna be watching, watching the rod tip. Got it? And uh, yeah, one thing that's critical about that is either having some sort of spring bobber deal, like this one. Nice crappie, hun. Or just a really light, thin tip where if the fish pulls it down at all, you're gonna notice the bite. But in addition to that, so sometimes you might see the, the fish tick it down like that. Other times, one thing you'll notice is, is actually when the fish are firing up to bite your lure, there's gonna be an up bite. So it'll go like this. So if it's gonna hang like this normally, it'll go like this. And, and when, you, when you see that straighten out, you know that the fish grabbed your lure. So you ready to hit another one? I gotta warm my hands up. All right, now we're losing light in a hurry. Real quick, I'm gonna run down a few of my go-to baits for this basin crappie deal. Number one, if I can, if the fish are aggressive, I'm gonna start off with a really big, loud and proud presentation. So that's either gonna be like a small panfish size rip and shad or a smaller panfish size puppet minnow. Those are gonna be two of my go-tos. In addition to that, we got the trusty old spoon here. Could be a buckshot spoon or a forage minnow spoon. Regardless, I like these small slender spoons that are gonna get down in a hurry and you can tip them with plastic or you can tip them with meat. Regardless, it's just a really efficient bait for catching these crappies and when they're active, I promise you they're gonna smoke you know, some pretty big baits. So when things slow down, I like to go to tungsten. Now I just caught one here, getting them untangled. So. Right here I got the tungsten punch fly and one thing that I love about this bait is that you don't necessarily have to tip it with meat or with plastics. Right now I have a little skeleton minnow on it but that's really not necessary. More often than not I'm fishing this completely bare and another thing that I'll add too which is something that I think can help a lot is having a little bit of glow. So here I'll dip this in the, the UV light. You can see that this thing is, I don't know how well you can see it, but this thing glows up good. And to me, when the sun is starting to go down and it's starting to get dark, it just pays to have that glow on your bait. So this is one of my favorite colors for the punch fly. Just your standard, standard glow. And as it gets darker and darker, I think this helps more and more because it allows the fish to see it in the dark. So that's just a few of the baits that I personally like to use when I'm out chasing crappies in basins. I know a lot of people will use smaller little crappie minnows, and those can be great too, especially if you're not gonna be moving around much. Maybe you're hunkered up in a shack and you know you just you just said, I'm gonna stay warm out here. That can be a really good option as well. And what I like to do is if I'm using those crappies, if I have my electronics, you know, try and drop them into those same areas where I'm fishing my my jigs and spoons and whatnot, you know, higher up in the water column. But if you don't have any electronics, just taking like a small forage minnow jig or just a plain hook and dropping it down to the bottom and maybe reeling up about a foot or so, that's a great way to catch crappies too. You know, it doesn't have to be super crazy and technical. It can really be a pretty simple process to catch these fish. Oftentimes they can be pretty active when they're out here feeding, so it doesn't have to be rocket science. Personally, I like to use two pound test but three pound or even four pound would be totally acceptable when you're chasing crappies. Though if they are being finicky and it's tough to get bites, I would recommend downsizing, you know, down to about two pound or so. So that's just kind of how I personally approach crappie fishing when I'm, you know, when I'm out here chasing them. So that's the gear I use. And that's about all I got for you this video. If you enjoyed what you just watched, hit that little red subscribe button down below. Hopefully, hopefully you learned something that you can use to help you catch more crappies this season. Stay tuned because we have more ice fishing videos coming.